so hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video and in this video i'll be solving problem c that is bricks and bags from around 831 and i will also make a video on problem d so stay tuned for that as well now let's move on to the solution before we move on to the solution uh, i want to take a small break and tell you guys about newton school's premier coding contest so as all of you guys love cp and all of you, all of you guys love to code this is a great opportunity to show off your coding skills and also win some cash prizes there are prizes worth a piece 30000 and along with this you can also win some free coding courses or also grab some internship opportunities right so uh, for this reason only newton school organizes this contest every month on a global scale so you can also benchmark yourself where you are lacking or where you are standing uh, compared to other students so this month it will be on 27th October, it will be around two and a half hours starting from 9 p.m. And it is absolutely free to uh, sign up for. So there will, be, there will be a link down below. So do check out that link and sign up for the contest for absolutely free. Yeah. So let's move on to the solution now. So in the problem, uh, we have been given an array of size n where n can be up to 10 to the power 5. So something like a1, a2, a3, a4, so on up to an where every element ai represents weight of some brick i. Uh, along with this, uh, we have been given three bags. So bag one, bag two, bag three. We want to move all of these bricks into these bags such that no bag is empty. No bag should be empty. Uh, so let's say I move a1, a3 into bag 1, I move a2, a4, a5 into bag 2 and let's say I move all the elements from a6 up to an into bag 3. So I have, I have a6, a7, so on up to an in bag 3. After this, there is one more person. He will choose uh, one brick from each of these bags, right? So let's say he chooses some brick with weight x1 from bag 1, with weight x2 from bag 2, with weight x3 from bag 3. After this, we will find our score. Our score is defined as x2 minus x1 absolute difference plus x2 minus x3 absolute difference. That is how we define our score. Now the person who is choosing these bricks, he will choose these value x1, x2, x3 such that our score is minimized. Right? Our score is minimized. So what we want to do is we want to find the valid configuration or we want to move these bricks into bags such that the minimum score that we get is as maximum as possible right because the second step is not in our control uh, because after we have moved all the bricks the person will choose weight such that the score is minimized but we can distribute the bricks such that this minimum score this minimum score is as maximum as possible right so that is the goal we want to maximize the minimum score or basically you want to find the configuration that will find configuration that has maximum minimum score and that is basically the problem how can we do this now let's look at that so let's move on to the observations Also, uh, going forward, I will make an assumption that the array is sorted. Why so? Because we are just moving elements and the order is not important here, right? Because we are just moving elements into three bags. So the order is not important. So I can just assume that my array is sorted. So that is the assumption going forward. I will assume that the array is sorted. That is a1 is less than or equal to a2 is less than or equal to a3 so on less than or equal to a. That is the assumption. So let's start with observation one. Observation one states that it is always optimal to break the array into contiguous parts. What it means is that if there is some optimal configuration, if there is some optimal configuration, where bags are not contiguous, bags are not contiguous. Then I can always find an equivalent configuration. I can always find an equivalent configuration in which bags are contiguous. 
right? So how can I show this? Uh, so let's say I have a bag of size 10. So something like uh, A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, A6, A7, A8, A9, A10. Let's say I assign A1, A2 and uh, let's say A5, A6 and A8. Let's say these elements are assigned to bag 1. Right. And let's say A3, A4, these are assigned to bag 2. And let's say elements A7, A9, A10, these are assigned to back 3. So here if you will try to find the optimal values of X1, X2, X3, let's say the optimal value of X1, uh, sorry, X2 is A4, this is X2. Let's say optimal value of X1 is A5. So and optimal value of uh, X3 is let's say A7, right? So these are the optimal values of X2, X1 and X3. And as you can see, bags here are not bags here are not contiguous, right? A bag one is separated. A1, A2 are in bag one. A5, A6 are in bag one. A8 is in bag one. So the bags are not contiguous. Now I can prove that there is an equivalent configuration where the score where the score will remain same, right? So the values x1, x2, x3 will remain same. That means the score will remain same, but the bags will become contiguous. So how can I show that? So let's uh, write the array again. A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, A6, A7, A8, A9, A10. Uh, so let's say I assign all the first four elements to bag 2. I assign elements A5, A6 to bag 1. And I assign all the elements from A7 up to A10 in bag 3. So here if you again try to find the values of x1, x2, x3 you will get that your a4 is again x2, your a5 is again x1 and your a7 is again x3. Right? So you can see that values of x1, x2, x3 remain same but in the first configuration your bags were not contiguous but in the, but in the second configuration your bags are contiguous. So you can always convert an optimal uh, optimal bag configuration in which bags are not contiguous to a configuration where bags are always contiguous. So that is the very first observation. So you just want to break your array into three parts. You just want to break your array into three parts, right? So that is the first observation. Let's move on to the second one. It is never optimal to assign back to to middle segment, right? That is the second observation. It is never optimal to assign back to to the middle segment because your score is what your score is equal to x2 minus x3 plus x2 minus x1. So if you have three segments, right? So you will choose some x2 here and you will choose some x1 here and you will choose some x3 here. So your value will be how much? It will be x2 minus x1, right? Because the array is sorted and here it will be x3 minus x2. So if you add these two values, you will get your score is equal to x3 minus x1. So it is basically the difference between these two elements when you assign back two to the middle segment. But if you don't assign it to the middle segment, Let's say you, have, you again divide into three segments. Here, let's say you assign back two to the first segment now. So here you will have x2 here, you will have x1 here and you will have x3 here. So if, so if you try to find the score here, your score here will be how much? It will be x1 minus x2 plus x3 minus x2, right? And if you add these two values, you will get x1 plus x3 minus two times x2, which is obviously more than x3 minus x1. Right. So it, it so it so it is always optimal to assign back two to either the first segment or to the last segment. It is never optimal to assign back two to the middle segment because it will minimize your score. So it is never optimal to assign back two to the middle segment. So let's start with observation three. In observation three, 
विल ट्राई टू फाइंड द ऑप्टीमल वे और पैटर्न टू चूज एक्स वन एक्स टू एक्स थ्री लेट से आई एम आई एरे ऑफ साइज टेन we break into three segments a1 a2 a3 a4 up to a8 and a9 a10 we know that uh, back to cannot lie in the middle so back to will either be on the left side or in the right side so let's say my a1 a2 a3 are in back to this is bag 1 and let's say this is bag 3 so if you try to find the optimal value of x1 x2 x3 you are you, you want to minimize the value of x2 minus x1 plus x2 minus x3. So we'll choose the value of x2, which is lying closer to x1 and x3. So you, you so you will obviously choose a3 as x2. Similarly, you want to minimize the value of x2 minus x1. So we'll choose the value of x1, which is closer to x2. So you will obviously choose a4. Now you also want to minimize x2 minus x3. So you will choose the value of x3, which is lying closer to back two. So you will obviously choose a9. Right. So that is how you will choose x1, x2, x3. so if you try to see the pattern here you can see that the first two elements will be adjacent and third element will be the starting element of bag 3 similarly uh, if you try to assign bag 2 to the right side so i have a1 a2 a3 a4 a5 a6 a7 a8 a9 a10 so if you assign let's say bag 2 to the right side uh, let's say this is bag 1 and this is let's say bag 3 so here you will choose your x2 as a8 and your a7 as x1 and your a3 as x3 right that makes sense so again you will see that the uh, second last elements are adjacent right so that is the pattern so whenever you will break it into three segments the first two elements will be adjacent so either x1 x2 or either x1 uh, so either x2 x3 the, they will be adjacent so that is the third observation so let's move on to the fourth observation it says that corner bag will always be of size 1 how can i show that so i have a1 a2 a3 a4 a5 a6 a7 a8 a9 a10 right here my back to is a1 a2 a3 a4 up to a8 till let's say this is bag 1 this is let's say bag 2 and this is, let's say a9 a10 is in bag 3 so if you try to find the score here my this is x2 this is x1 and this is x3 so my score will be how much it will be a9 minus a3 plus a4 minus a3 which is a9 plus a4 minus 2 times a3 but it is not optimal right because i can easily increase this score how so if i just uh, let's say i remove a9 from bag 3 let's say i push a9 to bag 1 and let's say i only keep a10 in bag 3 right then my x3 will be how much my x3 will be equal to a10 so if you try to find the score again my score will be how much it will be a10 plus a4 minus 2 times a3 right and as you can e uh, easily see now my a9 has been replaced with a10 so obviously my this score is high so let's call it score 1 and let's call it score 2 so you can easily say that your score 2 will be greater than equal to score 1 right because a10 is obviously more than a9 so it always makes sense to just keep one element in the last bag so if your bag 2 is lying on the left side your bag which is lying on the right side will always have only one element all the other elements will lie in the second bag right so now you have one more observation and these observations are enough to solve the problem now so now you have enough information to solve the problem so you have your array Of let's say size ten again a one a four a six a seven a eight a nine a ten let's say your back two is lying on the left side so it is here this is back two right you know your last bag will always be of size one so this is of size one so your a ten is let's say in bag three and all the leftover elements are in bag one. 
so the only thing left is to find this break point find this break point right because it is fixed right it this bag is always of size one so so the falling break point is fixed this point is fixed the only variable break point is the point between bag two and bag one so now you just want to iterate over all the elements and find the break point such that it will maximize the scope so if you are at some element ai and you want to find the break point between ai and ai plus one the score here the score here will be how much the score here will be a i plus one minus a i plus a n minus one or you can say a n you can say a n minus a i right that is the score at some random break point so you will just iterate over the whole array and find the score for this break point that is when the back two is lying on the left side you can do the same thing when back two is lying on the right side so that is the entire problem and if you guys want to see the code for this uh, here is the code so i will take the array and i will just sort the array and then i will go over the array and if i assign block 2 on the left side then my answer is vi plus 1 minus vi so this part this is ai plus 1 minus vi and v of n minus 1 minus vi so basically this a of n minus ai this is when block 2 is on the left side otherwise you can assign block 2 on the right side and do the same thing in that case answer will be vi plus 1 minus vi plus vi plus 1 minus v0 and in the end you, you can just print out the answer so that is the entire solution and if you guys have a doubt feel free to join my discord server i'll be more than happy to answer your doubts there and i will see you guys in the next one bye bye